Hey everybody, so here we are live for Photoshop for Complete Beginners with my friend John Williams. How you doing, John? Hello, Andrew. Hey, that's me. Hello. Hi, Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I I hope I don't let anybody down today. I, I'm so excited uh, to show you uh, the, the ins and outs and the beginnings of Photoshop. If you're brand new, then uh, get ready for a wild ride. Yeah, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. And uh, so real quick, you might have noticed that in the back, I've got my, yeah. it's not officially October yet, but it's close enough. So I've got my Halloween kind of focused theme. Yeah. And those are two uh, AI art images I created with uh, Leonardo and then took into Photoshop and jazzed up. So I wanted to give a shout out to my friend, Bonnie, Bonnie Lotka, who creates this UV flux print a new as she says a magical new print process Ooh. so she printed those images and uh if you are interested you can check it out and let me see about just grabbing uh one of them real quick yeah yeah let's see uh so it's kind of like got this nice texture i don't know if you can see it so much but yeah it's pretty cool it's got this nice texture it's almost kind of um, almost like a hologrammy type of feel. Oh wow, uh, that's certain lighting. It's kind of hard to get the lighting here, but um, right. I was wondering when you said magical. I thought, well, what makes it magical? But I see it's that texture. That my process. art is magical. It's magic. I'd like to see <laughs> someday. You should do Andrew a, a live stream on your process of how you take AI images and then you gussy them up in Photoshop. That would that, be. I would love to see that. Away. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I don't know. About you guys, I don't know. There we go, right? That Maybe I'm just crazy. crazy right? Yeah, yeah the, the, the one thing I've noticed is you ask people, like, can you share your prompts for your AI? And people are like, hmm, yeah, gotta go. <laughs> Ancient Chinese secret. Oh, yeah. look at the time. Oh, gotta go. You yeah. got Scott saying hello. Hey, Scott. What's Osvaldo up? from LA is here. Osvaldo from and, cloudy uh, barbara's here and i believe it's her birthday so happy birthday barbara happy birthday to you happy birthday Hello. Barbara! <laughs> okay so let's go over so i'm gonna let john take it away and what? uh before we begin i am you do want the uh kind of the way we do this to be that people can ask questions as we go correct absolutely yeah if you got questions jump in Questions, comments, uh, recipes, I'll take it all. So just feel free. We're all like having a good time here. So uh, cool. we're all in this together in this learning journey we call Photoshop. So here it is. Uh, when you first open Photoshop, <laughs> your screen may not look exactly like this, but I wanted to draw some attention first to something nice that Adobe does. If you look in over here, after you open Photoshop, you go to the home screen, and it shows all your recent stuff, but you can also go down here to this tab that says, uh, is it showing up on the screen? It yeah, says, yeah, learn. Learn, yeah, and that has some wonderful resources that kind of just walk you through different mm -hmm. things. You may have something very specific in mind, you probably do if you're using Photoshop, nice. and maybe this can kind of guide you in that. So uh, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And uh, even us uh, old grizzled veterans find some some uh, interesting things that we probably didn't know in there. So check yeah, that different, out. Different way to do it, a refresher, et cetera. Quite nice. That's, isn't that the great thing about Photoshop? I think that's one of, the, one of the things I like the most is that there is no one way to do some cool stuff in Photoshop. There's, right, cool. there's several things. So uh, let's, let's get started, shall we? Okay, we got the big blue button that says, new file so okay why not let's start a new file press the blue button and then you get this dialog box here that says all this stuff ah what do i do now well you have some choices here you have uh, you can do a custom thing now this is something i preset and i also uh, preset this that's called social one and uh, i can show you how to do that if you want i did this because uh, facebook's resolution it likes 1200 by 630 so I, I kind of doubled that to work with. And uh, so that's my thing. And so you have these choices. <laughs> or you can go over here and pick your own size. You can go by pixel or inches. I it, this, this is a raster program, so I typically use pixels. So um, 
yeah, you can go in here and you choose your resolution either by pixels by inch or pixels by centimeter. I just go pixels by inch. And web resolution is 72 DPI. That's like dots in your, your screen there, 72 dots per inch, pixels. So uh, you have other choices here. You like your color space uh, your, or color mode, excuse me. You can go uh, bitmap, which uh, that's really kicking it old school right there, man. <laughs> Gray school. Uh, RGB is typically what you're going to do if you're doing stuff for, uh, you know, for uh, online, for the TikToks or uh, whatever. Uh, CMYK, if you're going to be doing something in print, you want to use CMYK. Um, you'll notice that some features in Photoshop are not available in CMYK. And uh, I'm probably jumping the gun there, but uh, we get back to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. RGB color, so let's stay with that. 8-bit uh, is pretty good. You're gonna get bigger file sizes with 16-bit, but you're typically your gradients may be just a little bit smoother with 16-bit, so I tend to work in 16-bit. Just for grins, let's just go back to 8-bit here, and this will just show your background. And there's your color profile. Um, I would I would recommend probably, Andrew, you can maybe help me out on this, I'll back me up or, or refute this, but I tend to go with just the the standard SR, sRGB uh, profile. The one thing that I found very interesting is, um, so, you know, I always used to use sRGB for Facebook and social. And then I, I started to notice that a lot of these print houses that I was mm. sending work for clients would say, yeah, just save it high, high res sRGB file. I'm like, what? And oh. yeah, so that's what a lot of even like, you know, good print. quality printers will use. Is that right? That's good so to that's know. A, a word for the wise, make sure you always ask your print house yeah. what color profile. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. If you're ever doing print work, like you're, uh, like, uh, for instance, I make uh, like booth graphics, great big booth graphics and stuff. And I always right. have to ask them like very specific specifications on what they need. Or if you're printing for, say, a magazine or just a flyer or something. So yeah, it depends on, on the print company and, and what they want. So, okay, enough of that. Let's press yeah. the... And can I uh, yeah, uh, jump remind, in. remind something before you hit create? Oh, uh, yes. Please. Besides, you know, what he did going through, do remember that if you look at the top, those are the presets. Oh. So you can go to like photo or print or web. Thank you. And then you get, yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. I often neglect that. So I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, I just thought because they're, you know, already set for you. So. Yeah. Even has film and video, which uh, you, you can do like your YouTube thumbnails, for example. Oh, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, 1920 by 1080 there and other things there. So, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Cool. All right, here we go. We're going to press the big blue button. Bong. Ta -da. There we go. I, I, that's exactly what I told it to do. What do you know? All right. So um, you can bring an image in to Photoshop is pretty straightforward. Um, let me go back and let me introduce you to our friend, the toolbar. And it's right over here. Some people uh, I know, like uh, our friend Unmesh, uh, likes his with the uh, the double wide uh, layout. So, oops, I don't want to do that. But um, I, I don't know. I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, this is kind of like my it's what I'm used to. You can make this uh, double wide. I'm trying to do that. Let's see, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Couldn't click on it. Um, so you, yeah, you can you can adjust that by clicking these these little double carrot here. Great. So yeah, I want to dock that to my side though. So I just kind of like grab this top handle here, and just kind of like did that. You can do that with all these panels. You can just take them, and uh, you can move around. You want to bring it out, let it float out in space. You can do that, or you can drag it into here, and it sticks to that. Slide it. It's it's a highly customizable. So nice. This happens to be my my personal. Osvaldo uh, says double wide for the win. <laughs> double wide for the win. Yeah, most people like that. I'm one of those weirdos that likes it all tall. <laughs> I like it vert. Yeah, like vert vertical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just used to it that way. So you know, cool. Um, yeah, so you have different workspaces up here. So what I did was I went to window, uh, window, hello, and then went to workspace. And uh, see, I have my workspace I call JW for uh, just wing it. And you can go to the default one. Here's the default one, which 
my workspace is very similar to the default workspace. But uh, yeah, let's go back to mine because uh, I like it that way. And if you get it kind of messed up, you can always reset it. All right, so let's do a thing. Let's look at the toolbar and all these things here. What are all of these things on the side? You've probably probably already explored some of this, but uh, we'll go through it real quick. And John, do you want to just uh, bring the toolbar maybe closer towards the canvas just so it's kind of- Yeah, so we can, uh, yeah. yeah. Looks good, yeah. Good thinking, my friend, thank you. Looks all good. right, so here we have the move tool at the top. And uh, I'll tell you right now that the shortcuts are your best friend in Photoshop. So the more shortcuts you learn, uh, the faster, more efficient, and less frustrating your workflow will be. So V is the short shortcut, just the V key. V is in Victor. V is in, uh, I don't know. V is in move. move. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Now you have your, <laughs> your marquee tool, M. M for marquee. And if you click and hold, you have a few more options here. You can do a circular or elliptical. And what you do is that, that just like does that do elliptical. If you hold down shift, it'll stay perfectly round like that and get the marching ends. I want to get rid of that. How do I get rid of that? Does it make that sound each time you? It, uh, mine does because I have a little macro. It'll it's the, uh, the Spike Jones uh, add-on. You should look into it. No, maybe I should make that. <laughs> if I want to get this, Adobe thing. should pay you millions of dollars. Millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and then I'll have a statue like life-size Dr. <laughs> Evil John. Okay. <laughs> Rabbit holes. You're like, okay. <laughs> back to back to where we were. You, got the, you see the marching ants? You got that selection there, but you, you don't want it anymore? How the heck do you get rid of it? Um Here's, here's how you do that. You hold down uh, Control or Command. Command if you're on a Mac. Command D. Boop. And that just means D, D for deselect. Oh. Or D for duh. <sighs> Whichever one you want. Uh, okay, more tools. L is the lasso tool. If you click and hold, you'll see more options. If you click on all these, really, you'll see there are more options here. You have like a straight... Uh, lasso tool. Beep, beep, beep. You want to do that? Yeah, sometimes yeah. comes in handy. What, what kind of lasso tool is that? Oh, it was uh, the and it's the uh, like the uh, poly poly. What I what do you call it? Polygon. polygon. Uh, uh, it has a name. Poly, poly, polygonal. Sorry, polygonal. polygonal, I polygonal. Or polygonal. Polygon. And you have the magnetic lasso tool, which a lot of people like that one too. I don't use that one a whole lot. I find it a little clunky, right? It, it is. <laughs> It's kind of funky. It, it, does it look funky on my screen? No, no, no. I mean, the magnetic lasso tool is kind of like clunky. And, it and is. It's not. To... Yeah, yeah. Some people, I guess, they're like old. That's kind of old school, but uh, yeah. it's there. It's there. Like I said, more than one way to skin a cat in good old Photoshop. Okay. And uh, one of our favorite tools right here is the selection tool. Uh, let's see here. The object select tool. Oh, by the way, W for that, which doesn't make you, you want to bring up uh, like an image where you can show examples? Yeah, let's do that. Well, you know what? The, what better way to show off the the, uh, the good things in Photoshop than to, uh, yeah. If I could uh, just get to my screen here. Hang on. It's not, uh, I can't get to my desktop. <laughs> I can't get to my desktop. What's wrong here? Hit F a couple times. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah there we go. I, I must have hit F and just you know, didn't realize it. No um, I thought maybe it would be fun. Can we try doing something? Um, I thought we could do like a little band poster kind of thing. Now, this won't be like high res where you can set you it just, up. You just drag that from your desktop right oh, in. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Let me do that again. Yeah, let's let's do that. Here, I, I do that so automatically. Okay. So magic. I know, right? You can go to file and import, but, you know, it's really just easier. You could just take it. From your desktop, I'm looking at a folder on my on my desktop, and I got this picture called band.jpd. All right, I'm just dragging it over here to my. You see that? Yeah. It's gonna let it go. Boop! There oh. it is. And you see the little X there? It's showing. Uh, okay, um, is this what you want? Is where you want it? All that. Uh, maybe I want it a little bit bigger. So let's do that. And what you do is just grab. See these little handles here? Boop, handles. 
handles, handles Messiah. That's and right. you just take it and drag that and trans it's the transform tool that we're using currently. So sure, why not? We're just we're just winging it here. Here's the beginning of our composite. And yeah, you say, I like that self. Let's do that. And then you just hit enter. Boop. And there it is. It's on your canvas. And then if you look over here on your layers panel, if you don't have the layers panel, you can easily find it by going to window and layers. And it'll show. Oh, nice. There. That's where all the panels. There are all the panels. Yeah. All your panels right here in one big long list. I, I was noticing, which is nice, is that new contextual uh, yeah. menu. Right here. When you had it like, like in transform, it then also gave you the option to like hit done or something. So it, it, it used to, you'd have to reach up at the top. Now it's right there, right? That is that is handy. I mean, the, I, I'm really, really liking the contextual toolbar. Yeah, yeah, I need to pay more attention to all the different options, right? I do too. I do too. Because I guess because I'm just so... Old school. We're stuck in our ways. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So looky here. We have, uh, it recognizes that, they, it doesn't recognize there's people, but I mean, this is one of the options you get in the contextual toolbar. I'm amazed that I can actually say contextual toolbar without flubbing it up. Now, now I'll start. Well, wow. you did good. <laughs> All right. So um, not that I want to do this, but let's say you can also remove the background. I don't know. Let's see what happens when you remove the background. Let's just see. It's thing. Um, yeah, not perfect. Because yeah, the, <laughs> Okay, so you don't like what you Adobe. Yeah, that's okay. You can do, okay, this is one of two things you can do. You can do Command Z to undo. Command Z. That's uh, in uh, most applications, I believe. Control or Command Z. Uh, or Photoshop has this wonderful uh, history thing here. So you see where it says remove background. It's like, nope, that wasn't a winner. Let's go back one step. And then you can go up to here in your history nice. panel and say back to the previous operation that you did. Yeah. So let's do that. All right. Um, back to the tool. So you did remove background. Now what happens oh. if you do select subject? Oh, I, well, great question. I know. Yeah, thank you. Let's try it. Uh, see if it'll work any better. Because you'll likely uh, or possibly get different results. In this one, it's hard to tell because, you know, they're, they're shrouded in all this mist and stuff. So yeah. it's a real challenge. But uh, let's see what happens. Um, yeah, it's similar to the remove yeah, background. Yeah, didn't quite. So you see, if I go up here and I make, like, make a layer mask down down here. Boop. See that? That's a mask tool there. I'm kind of getting a little advanced here. I'm sorry about yeah. that. Um, yeah, you kind of get the same results. So yeah. eh, that's okay. But you get the idea most of the time, it, it, unless it's a it's a tough picture like this one. Yeah. Um, it does an incredible job of, of doing that. You also have it up here. You have a, a several different options here. You have object select and that's like if there's a see it says oh that's that a, pretty good huh that's a yeah it does a great job it says oh it recognizes that to guitar that to guitar too but there's a dude so it it recognizes there's different there's a drum and that's pretty much it if you, click, if you click on him you can select the whole figure yeah yeah i believe so nice and then uh and then if you wanted to select the guy on the right as well would you hold shift I would do that. I would actually go back to your quick select tool. Quick select is a is another a, way. Yeah. Yeah. And what that'll do is it'll give you a little brush. You see that little little dot there? Nice. Turns your cursor into a little dot. And then you can hit shift and select more like that. Yeah. Oh, oh too much. Go back. Yeah. Undo. No problem. Sensitive. Yeah. Oh, very thin. I'm very thin. <laughs> I'm sorry. And you have other things, like if you want to uh, uh, subtract from that, let's say uh, you select too much. Let's say I'll go and select too much. Uh -oh. uh, that's too much. You can either uh, do, uh, I'm sorry, uh, option or alt, or you can go up here to this button here. Uh, you may not see it. Let me zoom in. Can you zoom in? Yeah. Uh, there so, we go. The minus. Yeah, the, the minus. That means like uh, like sun select that, that bit there. So let's do that. We'll unselect. But it doesn't want to. So, uh, okay. Well played, Photoshop. Well played. <laughs> there we go. We're unselecting this little bit here. Holding holding the option again, right? 
yeah. Well, actually, I, I just. Or you parse that. I all. did that. I know, which I, I never do. I, again, the shortcuts are, um, are a wonderful thing. Get to know them. And so I'll go shift again to get some more of this mic stand, maybe, if I want to. I don't know. Ooh. And then. So yeah, I'm spending way too much time on this, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay. Sure. So uh, yeah, Command D, and deselect that. Okay, so moving on. Crop. Oh, the crop tool. This is great. Uh, there's so much you can do now. With Generative Expand has opened up a whole new world of the crop tool. So uh, uh, let's say I want more. I want more here. Sure. Let's more see. fog. So all I did was grab the handles. More fog. We need more, more fog. fog. More music. We need more cowbell is what we need. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that uh, that's fine. Let's say you, you're happy with that. And so you, um, you can just hit enter or click away, something like that. So yeah, we've got we've got this. So um, uh, let's we can try generative fill and see what happens, shall we? I mean, are we are we getting too um, too advanced here? Well, I don't it, so. it goes well with crop though, right? It's a this crop. crowd. This is a smart crowd. I think you can handle it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do crazy. I'm gonna go up here to my uh, my my marquee tool, and I'm just gonna select a little bit, maybe a little more, maybe a little more. Okay, just right there. Okay, and then hit shift and get the other side, right about like that. So you see what I did there? Yeah, see that. All right, uh, here we go. Here's here's the fun thing. Now we have on the contextual toolbar, if you're using Photoshop 2024, version 25, and which I hope you are, yeah. uh, generative fill, okay? How's a fill doing anyway? I'm never gonna to talk to old Phil. Uh, okay, and um, let's just do nothing. You can type in something here. Well, let's see what happens if we just don't type anything when hit generate, boop. So and, information. Oh, it's thinking. It's thinking. Back in Adobe Studios, they're going. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, oh, and not too bad. Yeah, pretty cool. Not too bad. You get what's nice is that you get three choices here. This, I like this. Uh, oh, I, I think oh, I like that. Contextual more. text task bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's contextual. Now you see uh, that's kind of cool, but uh, I don't know what happened to his hand there. It's so close, but it, uh, you Geometric. know, it's not perfect, but it's pretty freaking awesome. So, uh, yeah, I, I like that. Although I don't, I think I like that maybe a little more. I know, his arm is unnaturally long there. It's like really long. Look at that forearm there, man. I wish I had forearms like that. I could reach the soup at the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you get the idea. Pretty, pretty cool. All, All right. right. Let's keep going. Let's keep on down our journey on the toolbar because, uh, I'm wasting time being silly. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, here's a tool that I uh, never use. Let me skip it. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the eyedropper tool. Okay. Pretty neat. Uh, there's also several other things. What was the other tool anyways? I, I don't oh, think I use it either. I never, what is that? It's like a, it's a, it's a, you can create a frame and you can, I think you can see if we uh, double click in that layer it made. Oh, it's a shape. Absolutely nothing shape, happened. Uh, yeah, you can add a shape. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I use that too often. I, I don't use that. I'm sorry. I've used Photoshop 20 years. But and eyedropper tool. 20. Yeah. Okay. Eyedropper tool. And the shortcut for eyedropper tool, you'll love this, is I. I for eyedropper. <laughs> okay. But hey, you know, it's catchy. Remember. So, like, you want to sample a color or whatever from, from here. Here or here. If you look down here, so you have your colors here. I'm just going to save this uh, for later. But so click on the red behind the the guy's city. The, oh. the red light on the bottom. Oh to, yeah. To the guy's seating. If you go to the to his left. Right, right here. Yeah, down. A little oh, red this thing. light. Is that what that is? Light. Is that a light? Oh. Okay. Yeah, that, underneath that, that's blue. It's red. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. Oh, good eye. Holy cow. I was like, I don't see a red light, man. <laughs> see, and, and so the foreground. Yeah, yeah. So you see, if you can see here. Um, Pretty cool. It it sampled that exact, that color. And if you double click on that, 
Double click? Yeah, double click. No, just single click. My bad. Silly boy. Um, you'll see that you get uh, like all the color, like science there. Yeah, the color picker. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see that you have your uh, hue, saturation um, stuff. You got um, RGB colors. Nice. So you see where it falls in that. You got your hexadecimal thing, which I love. Uh, being a web guy, that comes in very handy. You can just but copy really, and paste. Yeah. So if you're like doing web stuff, whatever, that can come in very handy. So, yeah. Nice. Anyway, yeah. And, oh, you, yeah, you can add, if you like that color, you can add it to a, a your personal set of swatches if you want to do that. You have like set up your own color palette, um, which is a very cool thing. You can do that. Cool. So that's the eyedropper tool. And there are other things on here uh, that honestly, it, I don't ever really ever you, use. You use the count tool a lot, right? The count tool? Uh, no. <laughs> um, I don't think I've used it. Only ever. on Sundays. And if I've had a couple of, you know, no, no, I just uh, <laughs> got to confess, man. All right, so there's some tools that you Our power user of the count use. tool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a this is an amazing thing here, folks. Um, Sorry, folks. Oh, calling you yeah, folks. Let's have fun with that now. Yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, we can do that. Okay, spot healing remove tool, which has gotten just. Well, let's, why don't you go through and show how they, they work? Yeah, yeah, let's show it better. What better way to show you uh, what they were? Okay, so. You have got, any portraits. I've got a brush here. Got a brush here. Yeah, oh, boy, is that handy for portraits? Man, is it a lifesaver? Oh, Lordy B. Um, especially yeah. for me. I mean, if I. I hate having my picture taken. I my face looks like a relief map of Utah. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. So I, I stay behind the camera. I got a face for radio, folks. All right, <laughs> look up here. You got you got look. This is brushes. You got brushes up here, and I am a kind of a brushaholic. I I've got a ton of brushes. I don't know if there's like um, <clears throat> um oh let's see if you need a brush tool. Sorry. Right now we're in the uh, the the content uh, the the spot healing brush tool. Sorry. So anyway, you have your, your brush panel that appears up here when you're in that and you can make it bigger. So you made it bigger. You can make it really big if you want. Like it <laughs> covers the entire canvas. Um, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Um, yeah. Or you can make it smaller or bigger by using the left and bracket keys on kind of square brackets up on your keyboard. So I'm doing a left bracket. And a red bracket. Boop. Nice. So like that, you can do that. Also, the, if this brush is a little too soft or hard for you, you can adjust that. So the hardness will make it like a more crisp edge to it. Like, oh, okay. Uh, good point. It, I have to, um, it's telling me that I'm trying to select the generative layer, fill layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to merge these two layers down by uh, hitting command or control E, and that will merge these layers here. Right. Okay. All right. Now, I I tend to be I, I like to work non-destructively, and if I am working destructively, I, I like to have a copy, a backup copy, just in case. So I'm going to make a copy of this layer here, and I'm just going to do Command J, and that just makes a copy of it. So you see down here, you got two copies of the same layer. Nice. So yeah. Uh, and the, the thing, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, spot healing brush too, just had a, had a moment there. So yeah, this does like a harder edge and this does a softer edge. I tend to go toward the, the softer edges. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Say you want to do, what do you want to do here? Uh, I decided that I don't want this drum back here, for instance. I don't know. I don't like that drum. I want to. I want to get rid of it. That's a pretty good job. You can make it smaller. You can smallify it. <laughs> and just kind of paint in there. And, uh, nice. So, yeah, it, it does really stubborn work. with that little kind of middle uh, horizontal orangish yeah, thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, get rid of that red light there. I don't know. Now that, I, now that you pointed the red light out to me, I can't not see it now. It's just like glaring at me now. You're going to see it in your dreams tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm just like, I got red light in the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. <laughs> we'll stay. Sing with me now. Okay. So, <laughs> no, don't. I mean, you can. 
That's good. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah, you get the idea. So, so what about the other before uh, tools that after, are in that for after? Okay, so yeah, some more tools. Let's, oh, oh the, down here in yeah, just in this thing. tool slot alone, you get some amazing stuff. The remove tool will just blow your flip in mind, let me tell you. So let's say that would do probably do a whole lot better job than the uh, than the other than the spot healing brush. Why do I keep calling it the spot healing brush? Yeah. So um, oh by the way, if you want to make your canvas bigger, see that's too small. I want it bigger. You can do uh, you can do a oh, sorry my bad. What I don't know what I just did. <laughs> But you can do command and plus, and it zooms in. Okay. Right. Or what I like to do, I, I've got this. I'm, and again, this is my silly little workflow. Um, I've, I've got the little navigator tool up here, and I just keep it up there. And I like to, I'm always zooming in and zooming out. So I like to do that. It's probably not the best workflow, but it's kind of. It's good for uh, retouching for portraits and stuff too, right? For sure, you can just get right in there, and uh, yeah, it gives you a lot of control. Okay, so navigator tool probably not a lot of the pros use it, but I do. So uh, yeah, okay. So the remove tool. Let's uh, let's go back to our previous one. I'll make a copy of that too. So we're in the remove tool. Okay, check this out. You thought that the spot healing was doing all right, but it was doing okay. Yeah, right. But okay, so. Just gonna kind of carefully painting in here. This is true magic. This is real voodoo science here, folks. This is it's uh it's crazy. And it's gonna get rid of it, I guarantee. Look at that. Beautifully my yeah, yeah. okay, here's what I did with the, the uh, spot heel brush. And then here's what the remove tool did. So much better, and in one swipe, one one click. I did all that. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. It is kind of weird, but what would happen if can I get rid of that mic? So he's just, oh, that's yeah. solid, yeah. Great that's job. Solid. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. But I want the mic because it looks weird. He's just <laughs> singing to the singing up in the air like a weirdo. Okay. Um hmm. yeah, and the these other tools, I, I highly encourage you to, to play around the healing brush tool. Is pretty cool, especially with skin. It's very handy. And, and how is how is the healing brush different from the spot healing brush? Tool? The spot healing brush. Um, oh, are you quizzing me now? Let me see if I can find a good example here. Let me find a. Dun, 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 dun. Whose picture can I use without getting in trouble here? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, well, I just use mine. Where am I? Um, I'm here somewhere. Um, I'm looking up. If you use the wrong picture, you're going to be in the dog. I know. I'll be in big, big fat trouble there. Okay. All right. Here's a picture of me. Ah, oh, this is from 2019. Can you believe that? That. Ah, oh, oh, this is why I'm behind the camera, folks. Ugh. Yikes. Okay. So there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Osvaldo so asked, can we change the shape of our brushes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I don't think so when you're doing the, the kind of retouching, though, right? But for this, uh, for no. For the uh, brushes, I think. You can. Oh, for, yeah, we'll show you that. Like, when you get to the brushes panel, oh, man, Ozzy. Yeah, you, you already know this. Why are you asking me? <laughs> you should be teaching this. <laughs> All right. So, okay, well, that's a good question, Andrew. So here's the healing brush tool. So let's say... Uh, oh, my lips. What's wrong? Can, with my can lips? you change the brushes though? If you go up to the brush oh. panel, yeah. Okay, so if you just try to click on it, it's going to give you this option click to define a source. Okay. So what it's going to do is, uh, yeah. So I'll option click, and I want to do that. So what you want to do here? Okay, this is a. How do I describe this? Okay, I'm clicking option or alt. Okay to use the spot healing brush, uh, right? Yeah, is that what I'm on? Yep. Well, I'm on the healing brush, my bad. Okay, the healing brush, so Alt or Option, boop, okay. Um, and let's say, got this little freckle here, I wanna get rid of that. 
I want to click somewhere nearby the freckle where the skin looks kind of the same, like right here. Boop. And you go over to that freckle. And I don't know if you can see this on your, your screen. This is really a, or let's say, uh, I got this like crazy tooth thing going on. I, <laughs> I want to get rid of that. Let me click Alt over Option over here. And uh, maybe just a little off to the side. Uh, I know what it's going to do. It's going to like just fill in that whole gap there. But for illustrative purposes, <laughs> now I'm really, what is wrong with my teeth now? Oh my gosh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you see what it does. The, it, now it's getting funky. At the, oh, that's horrifying. The double tooth. Absolutely horrifying. Let's undo all that, please. Okay. <laughs> but you see what it's doing? It's, it's taking uh, areas from nearby and painting over. So if you've got like a freckle, you can or the zit or, you know, whatever. I've got, Lord, I've got plenty of imperfections. Um, or maybe just kind of reduce some of these wrinkles a little bit. I didn't want this to turn into a retouching course, but I mean, anyway, um, that's for another another session. All right, but, so uh, what about, the, yeah, the next one? The spot uh, healing the patch part. tool. Oh, the patch tool? Oh, uh, you're saying the difference between that and the spot. So the spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. The spot, you don't click on option or anything like that. All it's going to do, it's going to do its best. Photoshop's going to do its best to, just guess just by clicking. what you want. Cool. And sometimes it's good, but um, sometimes it's not so. But for something like, uh, I don't know, in a picture like this, it might be okay. I get rid of that freckle, get rid of that freckle, freckle, freckle. Yeah, there's a scar from when I was uh, five years old and jumping on the couch and I hit the coffee table. And I remember, I remember seeing it like coming up to me, like slow motion, like in the movies. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wham! And so I got a scar there from that. Wow. That, so, uh, yeah, I let, that was a lesson learned right there. It's jumping on the jumping on the couch is probably not the best idea. Um, oh yeah, like just little things like that. You can just take that. So it might be good for that, but so it tends to kind of like smear sometimes, and it's not always the best thing. So you kind of have to go back and forth and see what works best for you, but. For my money, I think that the healing brush tool is going to be um, very valuable for you. Yeah. And what about the patch tool? Patch tool? Do we have to? I never use it. Oh, uh, right. But I mean, sure. So yeah, a whole area. You can take a little area, and then uh, oh, let's see, I forgot you. Uh, you just click in the middle. Yeah. After the selection, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, get a better better selection here. There okay. And then you can uh, pull up. Actually, I want the opposite of that. I want to get rid of that wrinkle. How about that? Instead of adding wrinkles, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, so yeah, just click in the middle. And he's like, I like that. This is great. Uh, this could be coming very handy for landscapes, stuff like that. Or I guess for retouching, if you make smaller selections. For so now you're adding wrinkles. Yeah, I'm adding wrinkles, yes. So it's the opposite. You What you select, you then click in the middle and you pull up to an area that you want right. to grab the source from and then it'll... Yeah, 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 yeah. I just added a wrinkle. I did it backwards. I'm, <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah. <laughs> John's retouching. We add wrinkles. Now let's try it with eyes. We okay. add more wrinkles. This will haunt your dreams forever. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, content where I, I specialize in adding wrinkles. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I never use it, but... Um, Please, please explore these and, uh, you know, just uh, go nuts with it. Uh, the brush tool I use quite a bit. B for brush. B is in brush. Now here, Aussie, is where you <laughs> you get your, um, where you can, you have a lot of options here with the brush tool. Um, first of all, I think it's, it's good. If we're working non-destructively, let's add an empty layer. So go down here and click plus sign. That's going to add a new layer. Ding. Nice. Furthermore, we can, um, let's see, name your, I, I highly recommend naming your layers. So if you double click on the layer name, you can do that. So let's say, uh, we we'll call this paint. We're gonna, I'm gonna draw some graffiti on my forehead. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, the brushes tool. JW Marriott, does JW stand for John Williams? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't really get a whole lot for that. I, I kind of got ripped. I'm still in uh, negotiation. So up here is your brush uh, options here. And fun. brother, are there a lot? It's this is like the coolest thing. One one of the coolest things about Photoshop. And I'm a brush junkie, 
So I've got a, oh, a lot of I've, different folders. This isn't, huh? this isn't even all of them. I've got you know all kinds of just wonderful stuff here. I love yeah, fog tools. Want to add those eyelash brushes, fog brushes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, hair brushes. I think this is from Christina Shirk. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I definitely have uh, some of her brushes. I have some uh, Umesh's uh, brushes here. I got some Texture Lab stuff. You know, I'm just probably some Kyle Webster stuff thrown in there. Cool. <laughs> when you think of brushes, I mean, you know, there's that guy. Um, so and they got general brushes. And so, yeah, uh, this isn't even all of them. Uh, it's not even close, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so you have uh, choices. Let's say, let's just try, uh, I don't know. Adobe Mega Pack. Let's try that. So we have uh, Ink Box. Oh, sure. I don't know what I'm doing here. These are fun. Cartoon. Oh, this is from Kyle. Right? Yeah. 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 There we go. We'll, we'll try one of these. This amazing cartoon nib. So Maybe you can give yourself like a calligraphy mustache. How'd you, you stop? Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make my, uh, my, my, my brush just a little bigger. You also have some brush options here, but this being a, like an introductory thing, you can do all kinds of crazy hoo-ha to your brushes here. If you click this, get in there and play with that, ladies and germs. Okay, so yeah, you can get in here. And uh, this will lead us to another thing, which is kind of intermediate, but uh, I feel like this is a smart crowd and you can handle it. It's looking pretty realistic. <laughs> totally. This is what happened when I tried Just for Men. It was horrifying. I had to shave. I had to shave. My kids were scared. They were like, what the heck, Dad? What color did you make it? It was like jet black. Yeah. I was just going for like a little bit of gray, a little bit of like darker gray to throw in there. But no, it, it was just like poof. <laughs> it was scary. So that doesn't look great at all. However, however, if you go in here, you have blend modes. Nice. Um, you have blend modes, right? Zoom in here zoom. on your layers panel. You have go, yeah. layers yeah. panel is a extremely powerful feature of Photoshop here. So you have a, a number myriad of what I love is that uh, I don't know, a few years back they added the, the preview where you can preview it as you're just hovering over as you're scrolling down. <laughs> these look these all look terrible. <laughs> okay, the soft light color. maybe not so bad or color. Let's go down to color. Color. So I got a nice uh, cotton candy. Cotton candy. Cotton candy beard. I love it. Cotton. So you get all kinds of different results depending on what you're going for. Uh, the blend modes are fantastic. Uh, I just yeah. love it and I could not do my job without the blend modes. Absolutely not. So yeah, it's a good cycling thing. Cycling through nice. Thing. Yeah, I'm just cycling through, cycling through on a cycle, cycle built for two. So yeah, I like the cotton candy. Let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> um you can also maybe you can darken it a little bit i don't know so what's yeah. that what'd you bring up oh my bad okay so i just i did command l brings up levels I did, oh, levels is not the the most powerful tool but like if you want something quick and dirty you want to just brighten and darken something you can do that um uh, also there's um another great option I'm getting advanced. I'm. I keep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I, just stop me if I get too too crazy here. Well, Osvaldo had that funny uh, statement. Oh yeah, he's, he's. I think he's narrating the, the photo of you with cotton candy beard. <laughs> he says, "I do have a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Yes. You let me my PSD go now. That will be the end of it. It will not look for you." It will not pursue you, but if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you, and I will, I will Photoshop, Photoshop you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I heard right, Seth said, said someone someone needs to mem that. How do you say mem memmy? I was yeah, yeah, wrong. Meme. 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 That's it. Meme. Yeah. Meme. <laughs> pick and add the movie taken quote. Yeah, me. Yeah. Oh, yes. That is. Meme. That's great. <laughs> I I love that. I'm 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 copying this right here. Copying and pasting that. Okay. Anyway, that's great. Thanks, all of them. Um no, I'm totally off track now. But uh I, I heard Seth MacFarlane do a, a funny uh like he did Kermit the Frog 
as Liam Neeson doing that line from Taken. He's like, I have a very particular set of skills, skills I've acquired over a set of years. <laughs> I will find you and I will kill you. I mean, he did it uh, anyway. We're here for Photoshop. Right? Fun. Yeah, Photoshop. Okay, let's get back. To yeah, back to Photoshop. Back to Photoshop. Okay, here we go. And let's keep going on our toolbar. Uh, let's, because we're, we're uh, just, I don't know. My ADD is just running rampant today. Uh, C, C for crop. And the clone stamp, uh, S for stamp. S for stamp. C for clone or crop. You'd think it would be C, but nay, that's for, that's for crop. So the clone stamp tool is uh, something I use quite a bit as well. And it's kind of similar to the, uh, the, the one we were just using, the, the, the healing brush tool, right? And that you hit the alt or option button. Uh, let me get back to it, sorry. There we go. Um, and let's say I really do wanna get rid of these wrinkles and yeah. So you can click on an area nearby that's really close like that. Uh, okay, we'll get rid of, no, let's keep this, keep the pink goatee. I like the pink goatee, that's really great. I'm gonna create a new layer because we're gonna work non-destructively here, remember? Okay. So there's a so new you're gonna one. you're gonna dye your uh, your goatee pink for Max, right? Absolutely, or blue. I'm kind of on the fence. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use this as our as our layer to uh, for the clone step. But for that, you gotta make sure you're in the the right thing, the right um, sample mode here. So you got current layer, current and below are all layers. I want current and below. And what that's going to do is Photoshop's going to see the, the layers that you're on as well as what's below and it's going to sample from those. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to press option or alt. I'm a Mac, so I'm, I'm on option. Uh, click nearby here. Make my brush just a little smaller, maybe right there. And I'm going to go right here. Click. I'm going to go up where that wrinkle can, is. Can you hit F so you're in full screen view of the one image? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Sorry, my bad. Here, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we'll we'll just, we have that. Do that on okay. yeah. space bar and grab. Space bar brings up the little grabber. You can just grab it and whoo. Nice. And let go of your space bar and let's go. Okay. Or there. Is that good? Cool. That's great. Yeah. Look at that nose. Look at that schnoz. Wah, wah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I got rid of that. So if I hide this layer, this layer here that I just painted on, you'll see. I don't know if you can see it or not. There. Oh yeah, before and after. Yeah. Before and after. Yeah. In the forehead area. Yeah. Beforehead and afterhead. Beforehead, afterhead. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll do the same with this one. Why not? It's, it's uh, you know, I'm making myself younger and. Uh, Doing all these. Oh, hey, let's, let's get rid of that too. Eek. So I'm just clicking nearby, where the where it's like the light and the and everything's the same, right? And just going and painting. It this really looks weird with without my frown lines. So <laughs> we'll yeah, don't it. take don't take your eyebrows off or anything. Oh, oh, okay. All right, I will. Oops, gotta. There we go. I thought there was a warning saying, do not attempt to take your eyebrows off. Okay, yeah, why not? I mean, there we go. Totally natural. All right? All right. He's like, you asked for it, you got it. There it is. Oops, well, I kind of have to. And, and what's great is you can go in here and you can um, you can make adjustments to it, you know, like in your blend modes if you need to. You can go and <laughs> multiply. Why would you do that? I don't know, but uh, there it, you have you have those options unlimited options and think of that as you're, you're making your creations or you're digitally painting or you're retouching or whatever it is you're you're uh, doing composites whatever it may be that that you have that the, the blend modes will uh, just open up a whole wealth of possibilities nice. all right cool very cool um toolbar back to the toolbar oh ho hum here we go all right so where were we we're at the, the clone stamp tool so let's see uh art history brush pretty cool uh i won't get into that because it's kind of a kind of a little more intermediate advanced kind of thing i'm sorry and uh, i don't want to spend a lot of time on it but you can do some amazing cool i've seen some people do some some beautiful uh, especially paintings with uh, the art history brush just so cool 
and I've kind of played around with it, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, e, shortcut for eraser tool, is the next one down, which that makes sense, eraser tool, and okay. that's it's destructive though, right? Destructive. That is destructive, ladies and germs. It will. Uh, so yeah, let me do my right bracket here and get rid of myself. That's it. I'm gone forever unless I do Control Z, and I'm back. <laughs> You're just a great. <laughs> so yeah, the eraser tool use with caution, or you can always uh, do like I do and just have a you save a backup in case you totally screw up. <laughs> it's entirely possible in my case. Uh, let's see the oh the uh, paint bucket and uh, the gradient tools. Yeah. Cool. Oh man. So um, with the gradient tool. Let's do the gradient tool. The, They've uh, improved the gradient tool in this version of Photoshop. Um, it is a lot more customizable and, and flexible in, in this new version. So I am going to create a new layer once again, because I don't want to mess up the layer I'm on. I want to be able to manipulate each layer and uh, you know, not be stuck with, with that. So you, you know, add your layers, we'll name our layers, we'll call it gradient because I'm just so creative with names. Um, down here on my color picker, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch this to, uh, see we have, uh, like black, black. black was my background, red was the foreground, I'm switching it, or black is the foreground. Or if you just want an entirely different color, you can always double click, or I'm sorry, single click on it. And let's say I want blue instead. I want blue, not black. So you can just go up here and, Find the blue you want. Nice. Right? So you can move up and down this. Or I want, uh, I don't know, something purpley pinky or something, that, uh, or orangey. Oh, that well, could be good, like a burnt umber <laughs> something. I don't know. Orange, why not? Let's do orange. So, um, yeah, and the gradient tool is, oh, and okay. Here's another thing. It may not give you the gradient that you selected. So you got to, you're going to have to go up here and make sure. The options bar. Yeah. yeah, that's right. All your options are up here. And don't forget about that because you've got tons of stuff up here. Different uh, modes here, right? You can make it a, a circular gradient or like a, a, what do you call this? A radial or something? Something like, yeah, they, uh, the, that's the radial. And if I forgot this one, you know, I don't don't ever use. I typically use just these two, or sometimes we use this one. Uh, it gives you kind of a thing there, like that. Um, but yeah, we're just going to use the linear. And uh, so yeah, it uh, didn't give me the color I wanted. So I'm going to oh well, I don't want rainbow. That's just crazy, man. Um, all right, bear with me. <laughs> so you can you can pick here from one of your swatches, which I have a lot of swatches here and a lot of a lot of gradients, as you can see. I think you've, you somewhere because you clicked, you lost the yellow ochre, so you might have to. I did. I guess you can go back and uh, get that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. easy. Though. Something like that. So and then go back to the. Yeah. yeah. There we are under basics. Yeah. 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 So yeah, here under basics, there's there it's showing up. So that's what we want right there. See it? That's what we want. And you see it has little, little squares there. Just means that the background is transparent. Nice. So that's exactly what I want. So yeah. So um, you're gonna add the little sunshine or yeah, add a little like a lens flare or something, maybe up here. Hey. And then, and then you can go up here to your blend modes over here in your layers panel. See, beep. And let's say that doesn't really quite look realistic. Maybe we could use one of these blend modes to kind of sell it. Soft light maybe, or overlay, nice. or screen. Screen kind of makes it look more like a uh, sun, doesn't it? In this case, it looks more- Nice to have all those options just by cycling through, you know? I love that you can preview that. It sure is a, a big help. You'd think I would have ironed my shirt that day. It's not so bad. It looks fine. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, we just added like a little fake sun, sun uh, flare there by using our gradient tool. Boop, and then 
I use screen mode. Uh, what say that's too strong? You don't want too strong. You can change your opacity. Nice. No problem. Always options in Photoshop. There are indeed. Um, I would love to show you some of these options someday. Uh, I, I think I would love to do a thing on typography sometime, Andrew, if I could do that. Mm, I sure, that'd be a good indulging me there, but the things you can do with typography in, in um, Photoshop is just uh, so much fun. But we'll continue on our journey. Plenty of live events to be had. <laughs> I just got to stay alive. That's the, that's the stuff, you know. Sharpen. Uh, sharp keep eating healthy. Yeah, that's right. You got to eat that. That keep eating that kale. Anyway, uh, blur tool, sharpen tool, very handy for retouching. I'm nervous I'm going to gain weight back at max. <laughs> there's always so much to eat, but there's also always food a lot. trucks, and desserts. And Let's stop it right now because I'm already getting hungry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but there's also a lot of walking, so I figured. That's, yeah, that's what I'm hoping that balances out. Balances out. It's all good. Yeah. In fact, they encourage you. You should eat more. That's Someone says typography, yes. Typography, yes. I say ty typography. I say right. typography, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. It, it'd be a lot. To, there's so much fun stuff we can do. It's one of my favorite things. Um, yeah. Typography in Photoshop with John Williams. Yep. There. We will do it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, We're uh, almost out of time. Do you want to go? Almost out of time. I know. Okay, okay, real quick. Dodge burn. Dodge. Uh, light, light and stuff. So uh, we'll work destructively since in the interest of time. Let's say uh, I want to lighten up my eyes a little bit. Oh, that's too much. So it's hey, dodging. If it's way too much, you can always bring it down. In fact, I always do. Subtlety is is a very uh, is a lovely thing. Subtlety, subtlety, subtlety. Oh, sorry, wrong layer. It, it was fussing at me. So let's say I want to like brighten up my my old eyes here. <laughs> And uh, you can do that. So and it's subtle, but you know, uh, burn does the opposite, darkens. Okay, cool. Pen tool. Oh, if you could learn to use the pen tool, the world is your oyster. I mean, okay, here's what you do with the pen tool. Real quick, you can draw uh, shapes with it. You can make a brooch, a pterodactyl, a hat. <laughs> For those of you who are airplane fans, it creates a new layer on its own when you use that. See, it just made automatically made a new layer there. Or what's really handy, also for retouching or compositing, you really handy for compositing. And how did you switch to this oh, function? P for pen tool, by the way. No, no, um, I mean, well, I guess you're still doing a shape, but how do you switch to it just being like oh, a path? The, yeah, the path. Oh, good question. Okay, yeah, up here. So you have an option to shape. There we go. Nice path. Yeah. So so if you say uh, like yeah, yeah, you're doing like a, a composite, and you just want to cut me out, and you're like a, a real stickler for pixels, which I admire that. And uh, John, so a real nice selection. You can take your pen tool, and do that. But I won't do the whole thing because that'll take too long. And John. Yes, sir. Darren asks, can you go over layers quickly? Please? Oh, absolutely. I would love to, Darren. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll probably do a whole uh, focus live on typography itself, which would have been the next tool in another session. The type tool. The T, T for type. Yeah, T for type. And uh, that just gives yeah, you... So let's, yeah, let's focus on uh, layers. Let's layers. Go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got Lorem Ipsum there. Okay, layers. Okay, so you have um, the layers panel here. So what can we say about layers? But you have, um, let, me, let me bring it out. What are the options? Oh my goodness, well. So many options. Okay, you see uh, automatically when you first create a Photoshop document, you have a, or if you import a, a, a photograph or something. You wanna get rid of the other layers? I could get rid of, sure. They're and, gone. Ta -da. Yep, gone. And uh, let's see. Get rid of that. Get rid of that path too. So there's there's your first layer. If you want to create a brand new layer, it's right here. Right. You create a new working layer. Uh, so you want to like do something with brushes, or you want to, uh, I don't know. You want to work with the clone stamp, for example. Uh, then a new layer. That's how you do that. Double clicking on the name of the layer enables you to re uh, name your layer. And if you're sending 
art off to anybody else that has Photoshop and they're going to open up Photoshop and they're going to see your Photoshop file, they're going to love you if you have your layers named and organized well. So uh, always name your layers. Um, no, there's nothing there, so I call that nothing layer. <laughs> so for now, um, let's see, what can I, what's going to go over here uh, with the layers panel? Um, in layers, you also have, oh, i got to go over this. Look at this. you got a whole bunch of stuff here. You have, uh, you can put in a solid color a gradient. Uh, the curves adjustment layer is extremely handy. So let's let's go over that real quick because we're all, we're kind of going over time, and I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. Uh, okay, so here we are in the curves adjustment layer, and you see that I have a little curves panel over here on the right. Um, if you click on this little line here and bring it down, you'll see that it darkens and lightens depending on how you treat that. Roop, 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 like that, see? Okay, so um, this, it's a little retouching. This is kind of an advanced thing, but uh, we'll do it real quick. Uh, curves right here. This little guy here, whoop, click on that. And if you click on like here on this bright spot, I want to kind of tone down the brightness of my shiny skull. So it'll bring down these highlights. It's like that target adjustment tool. It's targeting that right specifically. And it's bringing everything else down too, but it's bringing down the highlights just a little bit. But then if you want to bring down, bring up the shadows, you can also just go in here in like a dark area and bring it up. Just a little, and just tiny, tiny bits make a big difference. Tiny bits. You see, you see how it's I'm pointing at it like you're uh, you see over here on the right how it's uh just making tiny little curves adjustments. On the left is, is the dark stuff, and on the right is the bright stuff. Okay. Nice. So yeah. And um uh, yeah, I would highly encourage you to just get in there and, and play with uh, the things that you can do with, with layers and the blending modes because uh, that makes uh, makes it all worthwhile. And, and um, we've gone over time, and I'm terribly sorry, but I, I hope this uh, was helpful to some folks. Well, do you want to quickly um, yeah. duplicate the background layer and then, you know, whatever, change it with like in hue saturation or something and oh. then just show how layer masks work? So you can see the the image underneath type of thing. Uh, sure, I can do that. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's give an idea about that. Well, it's, okay. So what I did was I went to this little uh, this little little tiny guy down here, and you have all kinds of options. I went to hue saturation. That's what I did. Okay, so um, yeah, hue saturation. Uh, where is it? On the right. Yeah, it's on. The, so uh, we call this HSL, the hue saturation and and uh, lightness or luminance. Um, so do, do something kind of extreme and then maybe show how yeah. it has the built-in layer mask so you can okay yeah. cool. so um i'm i'm taking this and i'm uh, just a quick way to change the color of your shirt nice that, that, that's right yeah you can also oh, use a, this guy here and target an area and it recognized that as blue well so let's say I want to change the color of my shirt. I want it to be that or, uh, you know, or yeah. Can I, sometimes they, it doesn't look quite natural, but uh, I mean, that's where your blend modes might come in handy. But let's say we want to change it to that. Oh, that's kind of a, kind of a yeah, decent thing. Here. You can even bring up the saturation. I would be very careful with that. Not too much because it's going to look fake. Yeah, that's a little too much. Or, uh, or you can just make it a gray shirt. <laughs> So bring it, bring the dark, the uh, lightness down just a little bit. Pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And then, so in the layers panel, what is that white vertical box to the right of? The oh, thing? yeah, this is? box right here. Oh, I, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so this right here is your layer mask. It comes with, it comes built in, absolutely free, <laughs> with a layer mask. And on that, so remember that black uh hides black the color black over here hides white reveals just kind of like day and night okay so we're gonna go up here and we're gonna get a brush Oop, brush uh i still got that wacky uh crazy brush kyle's amazing cartoon oh why not we'll just keep using it um and let's say i just want to make part of this a different color or i don't want that bit yeah, of sure. original right I, or i want like maybe the edge 
to be something different or, or whatever it may be. It, you, so you want to hide that. Uh, and you can always remember to adjust your opacity if you need to, because if you don't want to like do the whole thing, you want to have a little bit of artistic, you know, so you can see it's, it's, it's getting rid of that hue saturation adjustment on the, the layer mask. But it's partial because of the because of opacity. my reduced my opacity. Well, if I bring it all the way up to 100, you'll see nice. all that blue, all that blue is coming back and all that the color adjustment we made is going away. See? <laughs> Just by painting with black. Yep. And it looks like a shirt I found under a car. Nice. Space bar, grab your handle, and then uh, keep going like that. Cool. That's right. It's blue sleeves. Yeah. And uh, say, oh, I, I made a mistake. That's fine. Go up here, turn that to white, and just. Uh, and then as he paints back, magically brings it back. back the, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Masking. Masking is, uh, we can do a whole thing just on that. I mean, for, for sure. Pretty nice. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, you see, it wasn't perfect. I didn't get this, uh, this part down here perfect. But uh, again, we're kind of we're kind of speeding through this. But uh, I hope you get the idea. Yeah. Good, good tour of the tools. Good tour of the layers and layer masks. Nice. I know. I, it's, it's fun. I, I hope you think it's fun because, uh, I mean, yeah, Andrew kind of made a career cool. out of it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. Yeah, cool. We get rid of this guy. I was gonna uh, like do this uh, kind of crazy composite here, but uh, we'll save that for another time. Yeah, maybe like the whole typography some... focused yes. one. Yeah, we'll fun. just do that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, man. Any, any uh, last questions? Yeah. Everyone's being shy again. Uh, it's okay. I get it. I get it. They're speechless. Uh, I appreciate you guys showing up today. Yeah, uh, pretty cool. Thank you, Andrew, man, for letting me, uh, you know, hang out with you here today. Nice. So let me let everyone know where you can find John online. So on Facebook, find John at Pixelingo Media. On Behance at behance.net slash pixelingo. And on Instagram at instagram.com pixelingo JW. And just a reminder, I will be posting the link to the recording in the various Facebook groups. And you can subscribe for more Photoshop and Lightroom or AI art and digital art focused live streams and tutorials on my YouTube at youtube.com slash digital art drew. That's youtube.com slash digital art drew digital art drew on YouTube. Come subscribe, watch all the, all the long ones. So I get my watch time hours up. <laughs> That's right. Comments coming in. So, um, someone says always a new nugget. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Entertaining hour. Thank you. Oh, Ozzy says awesome as always. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Not making records says thank you. I'm not making records either, but you're welcome. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. And then let's see any other things. Oh, and um, oh, yeah. So a little bit about the groups. So you might have already found this event through the Photoshop and Lightroom group. But if not, consider joining the Photoshop and Lightroom group on Facebook. Facebook.com slash groups, Photoshop Lightroom group. And my AI art and digital art group just passed 22,000 members. It's booming. So that's AI art and digital art group on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups, AI art, digital art. Come join. And what's the Photoshop and Lightroom group up to now, Andrew? I think it's um, 362 or 64,000 members. So. Uh, 362, 364. And it used to be like almost half a million, and then I, I closed it and started again. So that's, for me, the real kind of um, yeah. you know, it's a wonderful thing is to yes. to have started fresh and built it yeah. up. You know? yeah, right. And then a little shout-out to our mutual friend Heinrich's group. 
He has an Adobe Firefly group on Facebook. So facebook.com slash groups, Adobe Firefly. So, awesome. And right, speaking right. of which, <laughs> speaking of which, a week from today, next Friday, will be the Firefly 4 doing a group Firefly fun extravaganza. And I think the theme is going to be Halloween. <laughs> Don't have to send me that text for the Halloween text. Someone says, has anyone treated you to that cup of Java? That's a nice reminder. That's very nice. I, I don't know who said that, but thank you very much. So, yeah, nice. Want to show your support for all that I do for the Photoshop groups and the live events? Consider buying me a coffee. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash drewcav and buy me a coffee or two or three. Appreciate it. It's always appreciated. So thank you very much. Thanks for the shout out for that. And thank you, John. It was quite fun and Me quite too. informative. Oh, so, we're just having fun here, but I am, I'm, it's my honor. Thank you. Right. So in the Facebook groups, keep your eye on the top pinned post oh, yeah. for more live events and news updates, contests, etc. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, John. It was I was, I was slow on that. I, I'm sorry. Can you do it again? What was that again? Top, top pinned post. post. Okay. Now we're cooking. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks Bye. again. Thanks.